peaks with the yeah with the theories on causality. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry. Maybe I should start from the beginning. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So. Um, so we all know that the biggest problem of deep learning is um, it's the L of distribution problem, right? So, um, so people have been using theories from causality to trying to solve uh, domain generalization, and we'll see one of the approaches today. Um, so the objective it's pretty simple. So given x and y, right? So the goal is to so we basically know that given x and y, right, there exists a relationship, and we expect to find um, the one relationship that is invariant. Invariant means that it remains unchanged when we change uh, the domains or the task. Okay, so uh, why we use um, causal solution? So the, the reason why people um, use causality in solving domain generalizations is because it, there are strong theories on invariance and, and intervention um, with respect to the true uh, data gener generating mechanism, right? So before I go to the paper, so um, just for those who are not familiar with causal inference, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, overview of, of the main ideas. Okay, so um, like I said, um, the two key important concepts uh, in causality that are applied to DG problem is invariance and intervention, right? So, um, so causality or like goes beyond just simple correl correlations by um, uh, believing that you know, there is a true um, data generating process, which contains a lot of um, cause and effect relationships among variables. So I guess you guys are familiar with uh, with graphical models. Uh, if you don't like, I, I don't have a very uh, good training on graphical models. Like strongly encouraged to revisit that. And so. So every data generated process uh, can be represented by um, a structural causal model, which is, uh, sorry, uh, which is like a bunch of formulas over here. And a figure to the right is a example of causal graph, right? And basically they, they two, uh, these two have the same idea in which it's, it just represents um, um, the like, cause and effect relationships, right? And uh, like, for example, you see um, variable O here, it has only one um, parent variable, which is Y true. So it's structural um, equation. It's only represented by a function with uh, Y true as a um, as a feature, and the other features are just noises. Like epsilon here prefers to noises, and the same um, principle applies to um, other variables. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, one of the important principle is that like it. Uh, it's called Rayshin Bass principles. It says that like if two random variables are statistically dependent, like what can be derived from observation data, like there exists um, a third variable Z that causally influence, influences both. Um, if Z does not exist, then we say X and Y has a direct cause of relationships, right? Um, so, Three example below is like illustrate three different scenarios where we can observe relationship between X and Y. So these two over here um, are like direct relationships, like X causes Y or Y causes X. And uh, and in most cases, like especially um, for examples um, in deep learning, like the, the, the relationship is the actual relationship is very complicated. So normally it's, at, um, it's confounded by, by another variable Z. Uh, okay, so another concept is called intervention. So 
basically you can understand in intervention as a changes in the true distribution between X and Y, right? Just like, just as we observe, like, uh, now, this is how we know what happened to um, um, in domain adaptation or like uh, domain channelization. So, uh, so the the um, the key principle here is called the principle of independent mechanisms. So basically, it said that um, the conditional distribution of a variable given its parent does not it, it is not affected by other con conditional distributions, right? So basically, um, if you go, if you observe this figure, you can say if X actually is the cause of Y, right? So you can see that these visuals basically implies that PX is independent of PY given X, right? So basically, if we perform intervention on PX, with, which, which means that pH changes, um, pH, Y, and X, it's not affected. It can be changed or it can remain the same. Okay, so, so what does it mean for, for, for um, causality? So basically we have um, distribution shift, right? When we change to a new domain or to a new task, but, um, but what remains unknown is the true causal direction. So it can be um, X causes Y or Y causes X, right? So there's a lot of um, scenarios that can take place. So, but what we know for sure that like when we, when, when we uh, change to a new domain, like P, PY must change, right? And what we call is a label shift. Um, so across all of the um, papers that um, that's like that work in uh, the intersection of causality and, and deep learning, it's like most of them assume that the changes in PYX um, it's due to covariate shift, which means that um, so most of them will assume this. Sorry, most of them will assume X is the cause of Y and, um, and PY given X, uh, it's the invariant factors, which mean the, the factors that, that remains unchanged to remain the same. And the changes, it's uh, due to the changes in PX, right? Which is the covariate shift. But, um, you know, but there are some, um, other papers that assume the opposite direction, which means they assume that, okay, the true um, data genera uh, generating process is a Y um, causes X. So um, they, and they, and because we know that P, P, Y's will change. So they will assume that P, X given Y uh, is invariant. So the purpose here is to learn, um, or to find out the invariant features, or or even to learn representations, phi of x that it's uh, that is invariant given y. So um, yeah, I have just make a quick survey of the paper in this field. Sorry, something. Um, sorry. Um, feel free to stop me if you have any concerns. Okay, so um, yeah, so I have made a quick survey, like collection of papers uh, in this field. So I broadly um, categorize them into three, um, like three, di three directions. So causal, causal invariant, so, pa so papers that look into causal invariant predictors, like the goal is to find, like um, they, they mostly assume um, that they mostly assume that PY given X is invariant, right? Which mean like assume covariate shift, and they try to learn a classifier or um, like the distribution or even um, the conditional mean that is invariant. Or sometimes like for for a paper that I'll present today, they, they the purpose is trying to learn a representation. Um, of phi x that satisfy these conditions, right? Um, so causal invariant representations mostly focus on the opposite direction, and there are like other approaches, but I will like get a chance to talk about someday. But just focus on um, the paper today. So our paper today is um, 
Yeah, so it's, it's one of the paper that belongs to the first category. And these are the contributions of this paper. So the first and also the most important thing is they're trying to formalize um, self-supervised representation learning. They're using um, causal frameworks. They also explain the success behind um, uh, supervised representation learning, sim clear, or even um, contrastive learning uh, approaches. And they also uh, define what is the optimal representation. And uh, the second contribution is that they propose, um, so they start with the regular um, self-supervised objective and, and they, they propose their own objectives, like they, they modify the original objectives to include the invariance factor and they also um, combine it with um, like the approaches in, in data or, or augmentation. And uh, and they provide a small proof um, on learning um, um, on task with refinement, which is basically instant discrimination. And they, they and they actually claim that instant discrimination is enough to learn invariant representation. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So the first objective is. Um, what is the optimal representation, right? So we start with, again, with X and, and Y, and with a set of unknowns like Y, like uh, when we want to do generalization, Y is unknowns, the so Y can be different domains or different, even different tasks, right? So the purpose is to learn a representation of X. So um, they define like the optimal, like the goal standard um, representation, it's a purpose, representation that it's invariant, which means that remains the same again. Um, uh, under interventions, right? Like under changes in distribution, but these interventions have to be performed on the features that are only correlated, but not causally related to why. And we'll see more in the next slide. Okay, so this is the causal graph that they assume in this work. So basically we have X, right, which is, which is um, image, which is an image. And an image here they assume is composed of um, two, it's made up of like style and content, right? S stands for style and C is meant stand for content. And they assume that only C it's, um, is invariant. C is the relevant to predict um, Y. And um, uh, and and they assume that S is is the is a variable that we do intervention. So which means they so uh, what they mean is that like uh, um, different environments or different domains or different tasks here like are those that um, that that are those in which only the style of the image changes. Right, which is a trivial assumption for to me at least, but we'll discuss it later. Um, okay, so so these are the um, directions. So he, again, here they assume that X is the call. Uh, um, X is, is the cause of of Y, right? But through but but not directly from X, but through a representation, and we want to learn this representation. And, and these are just like the form, like how they formalize um, this intuition, right? So, um, so basically we want, we want to have this conditional distribution PY given C um, is invariant. So the do notation here you see, it, uh, it refers to the interventions, which means like S, we need to style, right? And SI is just like different, like SI and SJs mean different styles. So do the do no, the do notation here in causal um, papers, um, it means that we we set the style equals to a particular value SI or SJ, right? And and they want that like if we can learn the representation, like we can use this this representation for a lots of different tasks. Which means that we have robust um, uh, prediction. Yep. So, uh, yep, pretty much is. So again, right? This is um, strongly aligns with the principle of independent mechanisms, and uh, and yeah. So another thing is that 
so uh, the interventions, um, it's like interventions on S refers to changes in the environment, right? And, and here in this work, they simulate um, different environments by different um, kinds of data augmentations, but the um, data augmentations approaches have to be content preserving, which means it's only change the style. Like, basically, like um, simple uh, stuff like rotation, flipping, or changing colors, but the content have to remain the same. Um, yeah, and the, that's okay, the second uh, is the objective. Um, Okay, so let me think how to start. Okay, all right, all right. Um, so basically, we have a set of data augmentations, right? And then, uh, and again, they like I said, they simulate like it's like they simulate interventions like through uh, data augmentations, and so this is the invariant prediction the invariant distribution that they want to learn, right? So basically these two are the same, but the changes is the um, changes in those distribution, sorry, in the intervention over here, right? Which mean like under different data augmentations, we wish to have this uh, conditional distribution invariant, right? So, uh, Okay, yes, and 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 they um explicitly enforce this by trying to minimize the KL divergence between these two um distributions. And noted that why are like why is why are here? Why are here is mean the target of a proxy task? It's not it's not the task that we uh, that we normally do, but but um, they will discuss it later. Okay, so this is the actual um, um, objective. So, um, so the formula they give to, uh, so they approximate, uh, so they estimate this conditional distribution uh, by a simple like um, softmax and the Q, sorry, not sorry, not Q, but um, the so file fi, fi function here prefers to it. So in the paper, they say that they will choose um, um, a function phi that it's the that measure the similarity scores between these two, right? So you uh, you have to, uh, uh, to take a closer look at this formula, you can see that. Uh, so again, like do here, which mean the um, like like the interventions we've mentioned the the augmentations, and uh, so um, I'll sorry um, sorry a little bit about the notation, right? So x h x i is associated with, with the label. So so even uh. A data point X has a label uh, I, so we 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 know uh, we annotate it with X I, and you can see that like here they trying to learn a conditional distribution given given an input X I, but but the target so but the target label is J right, so the purpose is they trying to maximize so basically which means they trying to um, maximize the distance so like, they. They're trying to make them um, different from each other. It's like, like in the paper, they say it's just, it's just like the regular contrasted loss, which I assume you you guys are familiar with. Yeah, so they're basically trying to maximize um, the the differences between uh, these two, and um, and they also at the same time they're trying to minimize the KL divergence between the two um between um, these these two distributions, like 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 um, consistent with, with what we see here, right? He's trying to like so this should remain the same under different um, different um, interventions. Okay, uh, and then the yeah. Uh, sorry, but uh, the S in the slide. Sorry. Uh, F F and S. What's the difference between uh, F and H? 
Um, sorry, where, where, where? Uh, in uh, in in the, for example, so, in uh, in exponential term or in a uh, contract hypnotic term, they have a F and a S. What the difference? Oh yeah. Them? Okay. Um. Yeah. So um. Uh, I will. I think show it in the paper. So basically, they assume. Um. Basically, they use the same. So yeah. Okay. So this is where I take this formula from, right? And um, so basically F and H uh, are like um, the representations, right? Of, of, of input X and here they, um, and, and they just basically learn this through a new a neural network and 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 they like here in the exam, like here in this exper experiment, they choose um, H equal F. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, does that answer your question? Well, but uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, but um, they don't actually explain why they make this decision. So, yeah. Do, do you know why the conditional uh, distribution <clears throat> P do uh, Y given FX is? Um, Sorry. I, I wonder why the conditional distribution P Y. Mm. So so the interventions uh, terms is mm. um, approximates to uh, some kind of uh, contrastive term exponential something here. So, so what is the intuition? Oh right? no no um no um it's, it's 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 not the exponential like it's just the the annotation that um that says. Uh, that, that says that we will use the input xi under intervention, like under augmentation L, and we use the input xj under augmentation K. That's what it means. And so basically, you, you know that they, they, these two points are different, right? So they so they basically just trying to maximize the difference between these two. I guess it's similar to how we do contrastive learning. Yeah, but why it relates to the label? label um, yr oh like yeah um because like label yr is the label of the input xj right like 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 yr equal j which means like the label of uh so so basically right like given f x um f x i the true label is x is has to be y equal i right yeah yeah, yeah so but here they, they use y equal j, so which means they, they, they want this to be low. Do, do you understand it? Like this is yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, because, because it, it's trying to make these two so, so different. That's how can I, I can understand. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it's, uh, it's like, a, it's like a, a clustering techniques. So representations of different data with different label should mm. be far away from each other. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's pretty much is, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, that, I think that's pretty straightforward. So, um, uh, yeah, so we come to the last point. So, so the last point is like, why they use YR right, instead of just Y? And they say here, y, YR is represent e, as if the refinement task, Right, so it actually refers to the instant discrimination test. So instead of we want to classify cats and dogs, so we try to classify like individ individual breeds of cats and, and dogs. So that's what we like. We know about instant discrimination. So they 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 prove that that if we can learn this um, representation, this invariant representation for why our for why our task is can be generalized to other different tasks as well. Yeah. So that's basically is so 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 that so, so that means that we only need to learn this invariant representation under uh, instant discrimination task, not not just regular um, categorical like discrimination task and we can have like an invariant representation fx that can be generalized to um, any settings but like i said um like for me this is for me like um this is a very rigid um assumption right basically 
Well, for me, like if if X changes, right? Like there, there could be more reasons. Like that, that, that could be because any content related features, like not just S itself. So uh, so he they only examine or do experiment under like the very simple um, settings like uh, let, let, let only like changes can be can only because of the style changes, but we know in practice can be different things. Yeah, so like um, so I choose this paper because it is a very straightforward and, and, and easy to 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 begin with to, to learn about causality, but uh, yeah so I. I so if you want to know more papers, so I'll, I'll put them in my GitHub. So if you want to learn more, like you can basically um, pin me and, and I'll send you some papers. But um, but yeah, so so yeah, I guess that's all for my presentation. But uh, one thing that I need, uh, I, I think we should discuss is just like because I basically only look into causality, but I really want to know. So how are these concepts uh, are already applied? In, in 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 work on, on data like on sorry on domain generalization.